This is DJB, and welcome to Photocritic TV, everybody. Episode, why am I looking up there? I'm trying to look, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at you. I'm There's no cue cards up there. Oh, oh yeah. Photocritic TV, episode 36. Welcome back, everybody. Um, if you don't already know, you want to have your photographs critiqued, it's totally free. It's not really a critique, it's more of a review, isn't it? We like to, we're just kind of, we're reviewing your photographs, and we're giving you some valuable feedback, we're not here to, you know, just make ourselves feel good. Um, photocritictv.com, click on click to submit. Submit your photographs, we'll have a look, give you a review, and you'll be on the show ASAP. Today, we got two entrants, Bernard, welcome, and Chris. Do you remember Chris? No. You wouldn't, he's not a regular, is he? No, yeah, so he's never been on the show before. Never been on the show. Oh, I tried to trick him. No. So, Aaron, Photo Critiques and Dedications. That's it, yep. Who's, who's this episode going out to? I don't know, I wrote this down. Uh, How's that? Actually, if you want to get an episode dedicated to yourself, go to Aaron's Facebook page. Like it. He, he knows who likes his page, and he'll mention you. I got my finger on the pulse. Like it's a massive deal. It yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry, I wrote this down. I'm a receipt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sarah Marie Brown. Sarah Marie Brown. Well done. This episode's going out to you. Thanks for watching. You're, you're much, a very special lady. You're a very special lady. Much much appreciated. Um, and I don't think we've even... Sarah's never actually submitted any photographs. No, she's a newbie. Newbie. Oh, she's a total noob? Okay, cool. Well, welcome. No, not a total noob. She's just well, noob. So... No, you just the girl. <laughs> okay. Let's get on with it. So... Do I need to do anything else? No, let's just get straight into it. What are you doing? Let's I don't know. Okay, Bernard. Bernard Bosmans is shooting with a Nikon D40, and he's got a 55 to 200 mil kit lens. If you remember in the last episode, episode 35, I was talking about kit lenses, and I think with the mail out to everybody, if you're on the mailing list, kit lenses are crap. Just to start off with that, nothing personal, Bernard. Just to let everybody know, if you got those kit lenses, the 55 to 2, 55 to Sorry, the 18 to 55 and the 55 to 200. They're the kit lenses. You're much better off with any other lens, pretty much, including the little primes, like the 50 mm primes, or the 18 to 200 from Canon and Nikon. They are both also a lot better than the kit lenses. Just to let you know, Bernard is what's he written here? First taken on the Seafarers Bridge. I don't know how you pronounce this word. I never know. Hang on a second. Hold on a second. How do you say this? Seafarers C- C- for- C- Bridge. Seafarers? Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is English and Grammar with Daniel and Aaron. Seafarers Bridge over the Yarra. And the second one was Roses Taking Botanical. Third one at Melbourne International Garden Show. Alright. So let's go. Which one are we going to first? Let's go to the, let's go to the bridge. Let's do the bridge first. Why not cross over the bridge first? Let's have a look. Bernard, Nikon D40. Now, Bernard, this is a really nice photograph. Great one. Couple of questions for you. I always ask this with um, black and white conversions. Is there any particular reason why you converted this to black and white? Um, normally when we're converting things to black and white, you there's gotta be a reason for it. So sometimes the colors are very distracting. I'd always like to see, I'd like to see this photograph in color just so I can see what the colors are like and um, you know, just kind of make my own assessment about whether or not black and white is a good idea, but I like it. The framing I think is the best thing about this and your composition is really good. So the white arch that really sticks out because that's the brightest kind of point in this photograph creates a really beautiful frame for this bike rider and you've placed the bike rider in the middle of the frame. Great. And in the overall placement of, of the photograph, that bike rider is pretty much on the left third line. Awesome. So when we're talking about rule of thirds, you've applied that. Awesome. And you've also managed to place the rider at such a point where none of these, there's a lot of lines going all over the place in this photograph. None of them are kind of cutting off her head or that none of them look like they're growing out of them. So it's almost like it's really, really good placement of the subject. So great one, Bernard. I really like that photograph. And to be honest, I can't think of anything 
else that what, what I don't know what else I do to improve that image. Good one. Maybe an explosion. An explosion. <laughs> Why not? This is Melbourne. This is not Iraq. All right. <laughs> well, let's go to the next one. Bernard. So this one really cool. So I'll tell you what I straight up what I like about this is the colors are really cool and the lighting is awesome. So the especially the lighting on the man here. So the man on the phone, he has got some really nice kind of not overexposed light, so good exposure. Um, he's not too bright, so you haven't lost any detail. He's not too dark, so that you can't see him. Well exposed, very well exposed image. And the guy is actually in like a bright patch of the sunlight, so that's good, we can see him. A few things here that make this image a little bit kind of distracting to me. Um, I would have actually, this green trees, the green trees in the kind of top left, top left quarter of the photograph, um, they're a little bit distracting, so it kind of takes away from the overall, takes away from the subject a little bit, and it doesn't really go with the colours, the main colours in this photograph. So we've got like kind of nice earthly skin tony colours, like the brown from the chickens, and the skin tones and the golden light. That's what I gather are the kind of the themes, the colour themes of this image. So I find that a little bit distracting. What I would have done is actually really zoomed in a lot more to focus on on the subject here. So the subject being the man holding the phone, I would have actually, when I say zoom in, I also mean you can crop this as well. So cut out that whole top quarter so that we've placed the man on the left third line and then instead of including that left chicken head, I just would have included the right chicken head that you've got there. So maybe that would have improved the composition a little bit more. Um, but as far as lighting and exposure goes, great, looks like you've nailed it. I'd be interested to know whether you're using uh, an automatic mode or you've done it in manual mode. If you've done it in manual mode, well done. Very well done indeed. And I can see there's a little bit of depth, low depth of field going on here. So the, the trees in the background are a little bit blurred out, but I can still see them. The colour's still quite prominent. So that's the biggest thing there. But I like it. Good lighting. Let's go to the next one. Photograph 3, which means it's time. Come but Aaron, it's time for Aaron. So what we do here is OTB on Photograph 3. Off the bat is what OTB stands for. We go to Aaron, he's the guy behind the camera. Beyond the frame. Beyond the frame, off the bat, beyond the frame. He's never seen this photograph, I'm gonna show him it. Using the pad, he's gonna look at it for seven seconds and give you his opinion. Bernard, are you ready for Aaron? Aaron, how are you going? Good. Yep. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Have you got anything important to say before I just take you straight in? Uh, actually, no. what? Well, it's actually Aaron's birthday today. How old are you now? Too old. He's actually. Can I tell? Can I tell everyone? No, let's let's not tell anyone. No, people don't want to know that you're really 13 years old. <laughs> people. Do. I'm a man child. <laughs> he's a, he's a total man child. Anyway, I'm gonna take you in. Take me. Please. In. Take the pad. Seven seconds. Burn it. Aaron's got the pad. Let's wait it out. Can I have some thinking music? Uh, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Next just, time. Just Next dump it time. over. Dump yeah. it over. Double in. Smells good. Mm. Smells good. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. Catch you next time. Yep. Get out. Can I go now? <laughs> yeah. Alright. Bernard. So, Aaron saying smells good. Um, I don't really know how to extrapolate anything from that comment in terms of <laughs> your photograph, but I'll tell you this, lovely image, very, very nice image. Um, it's like I said, it smells good. It smells good, so, but you didn't even sniff it. I did, you just didn't, you didn't well, see you didn't sniff. I have a keen sense of smell. Okay. <laughs> so Bernard, do you know what, um, what's, re what's really great about this photograph is, there are, first of all, it's clear straight away what the subject is, so there's no distractions. This is something I always go on about when I'm teaching people about photography on the walks, the photography walks around Melbourne. The first thing I teach them about is simplifying and eliminating distractions. There are no distractions here. And the you've done that first of all by using a low depth of field. So I would assume if you're using that 55 to 200 lens, you're probably zoomed in at 200mm here. 
um, and you're using the minimum f-stop value which is probably around f4, maybe f5.6 on that lens, which is not a, not a really low uh, f-stop value, like it's not a very wide aperture, but at 200mm it's enough. Yeah, yeah. So depth of field depends on um, focal length as well as the, the f-stop value. So the background is nice and creamed out, so it's not distracting at all. And also the colour of the background is really, really nice. It really complements the image. So it's still got that red earthly tone to it and it's enough, it's different enough to the foreground so that the foreground sticks out. The foreground being the subject, being the pink roses. The pink roses stick out from the background, which is great. Nice, sharp image as well. Um, so your focus is right on. And... Um, I can't think of anything, I really can't think of anything bad, but I really like that image. Nice sharp image, no distractions, great lighting, um, smell it. <laughs> smells, smells alright actually, it smells alright for an iPad. Mm. Yep, gotta stop sniffing iPads. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot Bernard. Come back again, please, please come back. Chris, welcome, welcome to the show Chris. Ah, uh, so Chris, what's Chris saying? Chris is saying he's shooting with a Canon 5D Mark II. For those of you that don't know, that is Canon's entry-level full-frame camera. And it's now been replaced by the Canon 5D Mark III. So, if you want... If, do you want a new camera? Guess so. Yeah, get one of these. If you want a new entry-level professional camera, you can pick these up second-hand pretty cheap now, about $1,800 just for the body, that is. They used to used to pay three and a half thousand dollars just for the body for this camera, so good deal if you want to get into the um, full-frame professional market, get one of these. Chris is saying, early morning on the beach, using this camera for the first time with the idea of capturing some action pics of the dogs, mainly because there are no issues of privacy, exactly. Yeah, they're taking this camera out of the ball, yeah. Cool, alright. So, Chris... First image, um, let me just bring it up I suppose, just waiting for the pad, pad saving sweet ass time. We'll get some more of that music. What is it doing? Okay, here we go, Chris's image, um, alright. So, Chris, first thing I noticed actually with all three of these images was that it looks like they're all pretty much taken at head height. So we want to try and avoid that most of the time, especially when we're dealing with subjects that are smaller than us, try and get down to their level. So when you're taking photographs at head height, it is the most boring perspective because that's how everybody sees life. So we want to try and make our photographs interesting, get down to their level. This makes such a big difference to the image because as a viewer you feel like you're part of the world of the subject. So if you're photographing a little kid, get down to the kid's height and photograph them. If you're photographing dogs, which is you know, obviously half our size, get down to their level. Um, this particular photograph, what I would have actually done is, uh, the lighting is fine here, just, just a quick comment, um, as in there's no harsh white spots and it's kind of well exposed so it's not too dark, not too bright. Um, but I think in terms of composition, um, we maybe need to work on a few, on a few things here. So the perspective, head height looking down, and also you come, you're kind of coming in on a slight angle here as well, you're coming in from the right. So how I would have shot this would be trying to get around in front of the dog so that that little dog would be, I wouldn't even be able to see his face, I would have just been able to see the face of the big dog staring at him and I would have tried to focus more on the expression. Um, excuse me, I've got a cold at the moment so I'm sniffing all the time. I'm not on crack, don't worry about that. Not tonight anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's the first thing with that image. Let's go to the next one, Chris, because I think a lot of my comments here will probably apply to oops, will probably apply to most of your images. Chris, hold on just a minute. Where's the pad? What is the pad? Yeah, okay, the pad's here. So again, same sort of thing. You are looking uh, down. It's, it's really, really obvious that it's kind of a head height image, so get down low. Um, I'm thinking as well, do you do any post-production work, Chris? Because white balance wise, I think you need to warm up this image a little bit. It does look a little bit cool. So when I say that it looks cool or it looks warm, I mean 
when I say cool, it means there's a bluey cast in the image that looks a little bit blue. Warm it up means add some more yellow light. So you can just do that in Adobe Lightroom or Camera Raw or Picasa or whatever you're using to do post-production work. Warm up the image a little bit. Um, but again, I'm kind of struggling with the... Um, there's not there's not really a lot of expression going on here. So with these three images like this, you want to try and tell a bit of a story. So to do that, we can we just kind of we want to try and focus on expression a bit. Um, I'll go to the next one. Maybe, maybe get the dogs to tell what they're thinking in, through interpretive dance or or something. Oh, just, I'm gonna ignore just, that. Just no, throwing it out don't, there. Don't throw it out there. Take it back. It's, it's, up. <laughs> it's on the web now. It's gone. It's there for forever. <laughs> So, Chris, this is probably my favourite out of the three. Um, I like this because, although it looks still probably again from head eye, but it does look like you've flattened, so you've got down a little bit lower, and you're mixing up the composition a little bit. So, this one is a lot more well balanced. You've got a little bit of rule of thirds coming into play. Um, top dog on the left third, the black dog on the right third, roughly, and the angles are kind of a little bit nicer. Um, but, yeah, I, th I do like this image, but I'm just tr struggling to kind of think what it is, how I, how, how I would improve the image. But I think, um, I think there definitely needs to be a bit more of a focus on, on expression. But I, I like this image, Chris, so thank you very much for submitting that. And I'd be interested to know what lens you're using with these photographs. With your 5D Mark II. Anyway, that's it for episode number 36. I'll catch you next time.